you know what I, is a composition of different presentations that I have done. And I think that's very important because we are asking from the students all the time uh, to read and to write papers uh, without trying to give them, you know, any tips how to write or how to read papers. And not only papers, but only, you know, your master thesis, your undergraduate thesis, the principles will be the same. And also, I will try to give you some tips how to make, you know, more interactive presentation as much as I can. So take this presentation more like a tips, like a, a guidebook or like a cookbook in order to enrich and enhance your abilities. First of all, I will start with reading because reading is the most important thing. If you know how to read, you know how to write. And I will show you how. And actually, you know, the more experienced academics where there are reviewers in other journals and when you are reviewing your paper, you should read it carefully and you should know how to read a paper or a thesis. You don't spend a lot of time in order to read introductions, etc. But you should find out specific information about the work that they are sending to you in order to review. So I have this kind of uh, path, reading or writing, how to write a scientific paper. Mainly, I will give you some tips about scientific writing and then I will analyze to you the structure of a paper or the structure of a master of a radical thesis, and then I will try to give you some tips about presentation. So my uh, physicist, and my, my business in laser, in laser physics, and uh, one of my interests is our teaching, so that's why I have selected to present this kind of topics. So about reading, it's something that you know a lot of people are asking, reading or writing, it's like this kind of uh, question that we are doing, if the chicken gave a birth to an egg, or an egg gave a birth to a chicken. And as you know, in order to become a, an effective writer, uh, in order to become a very good uh, scientific, uh, in order to, encounter, uh, to acquire scientific uh, writing skills, we should know reading. And in order to be a scholar uh, uh, writer, you should know how to read. So it's the same. Reading and writing are the same. You should know how to read in order to be a more effective writer. A writer. And in order to be a scholar writer, you should know how to read uh, what the other people are doing and get updated. Uh, about reading and writing, as you will see in presentation styles, are the same thing. All the principles are the same. We should be on point. We should be clear. We should interact with our audience or through oral presentation, or through our writing presentation, we should be interactive all the time. Right? And over there you can see a, a graph, like what is the research publication, and how research publication is linked with the research, research in a specific topic, or you are doing research by data collection and data analysis, you should reading, you should find out the claims of the presentation and the motivation of the presentation or of the what are you writing. And also you are writing academic essays, journal papers, book chapters, or in a conference uh, in a conference presentation. So the principles will be the same. And the most important thing about this, you, you should not worry about your talent. Because there are a lot of people, among myself, that I believe when I was a research student, that they uh, I mean, still I don't have I don't have you know any talent to write uh, very good uh, papers. This is an impression that we have because writing is a very hard skill. I mean, writing is developing towards the years, and as more as more experience you are getting, your writing is improved. But the most important thing about writing, reading, and presenting your work, it has to do nothing with the talent. It depends on the time and your devotion on these things. It's, you, you, you know your weaknesses, you know your strengths. If you improve them, you are going to become better writers, better readers, and better presenters. <coughs> so it's something that you can improve, and also it's something that can get you and can enhance your chances to get employed easier when you know the time comes. So reading is a discipline. We are reading something in order to get a, an expertise in what we are doing. I mean, when a PhD student starts his involvement in the laboratory, it usually the supervisor asks from the student to read and make a literature review of what is happening in the field in order to build the knowledge. Even you know, in undergraduate studies, when the time comes in order to write your undergraduate thesis, you should read what happens in the topic or on the system that you are going to analyze and present. So it's something that increases your expertise. It's something that increases your uh, uh, writing skills because the more that you read, and especially you know from expertise from people that they are experts, you are 
learning the glossary, you are learning the terminology, you know how the people are presenting from the specific field uh, their work, uh, what figures they are using, what, they, what measurement they are doing, and this improves also uh, your writing. Uh, it, sometimes it broadens uh, your skills. This is how I had this idea in order to develop, you know, to submit this kind of project. I know nothing about the project. I don't know nothing about artificial intelligence. I don't know nothing, nothing about programming. Because but through reading, I found out that this is very important for the fourth industrial revolution that has already arrived. It's outside of our door. In order to know what the students they should know, in order to be more competitive, more competitive uh, in the future. Uh, establishing your scientific mindset. This means that you build a, a, a classroom like a science. Because as you will see, reading develops also your internal question. Why this work happens? I mean, if you know the presenter or the writer, present the things and justify its results. Are these results the, the correct one? My assumptions in this field, are the correct ones or through this presentation or through this writing, uh, this article that I'm reading, my assumptions are wrong. So you are building a, a, the correct science culture to judge, but also do not be, do not be, you are not criticizing the other work, but you are trying to find the backup in order that you know, these results are correct. And this also improves the way that you are going to present and back up your results when the time comes. Uh, introduce you to the current research, what is happening, this is very important. As we will see, this is a border between knowledge and non knowledge. In order to write a paper, you should have a motivation, as we will see. And the motivation comes from the knowledge gap. You are going to publish something, you are going to announce something in a conference, something new. And the only way to know where this borderline is, is like to know the bibliography research, to read papers, uh, to read the books, in order to know where this borderline uh, introduces. And also focus your opinion on a scientific subject, which is related to the above. Be careful that you, we are interested about critical readers. We are not uh, uh, interested about people that they are, going to, they are going to criticize the others, they are going to be negative. A scientist should be an open-minded person. I mean, even though that you have an opinion and you believe strong in a specific field, do not read something using your mentality that this, 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 this item or this uh, uh, this phenomenon operates following uh, my, my assumptions. Sometimes you are wrong, sometimes you should correct your assumptions. That's why we should be constructively uh, critical, which is more positive. Do not be negative. Do not uh, uh, try to cancel something that you don't know. Uh, become a scholar writer. You should evaluate the other, the other people's argument, and this helps you to, to build up your own arguments. And this is very important. Because when you present something, and from the audience, they, they come a question when you don't back up your arguments. If during the presentation you back up your arguments, and this is very much is building up through the reading, this makes you know, the audience more happy and more in, uh, in informed. <coughs> Scientific arguments is the main thing that you should check out, uh, check when you are reading something. This is the motivation. And the motivation usually informs us why this work has happened and uh, why, why this experimental setup, experimental apparatus has been used, why the collected data are necessary and are these ones that they are appropriate, and how the conclusions are linked with the main hypothesis. So this is the scientific argument that is the first thing that we are looking for before we read the whole article. As you will see, reading science is not a non is not a linear process. You are not reading science for as you are reading a novel from the beginning to the top, but you are reading a scientific article or a book chapter by looking for the motivation, why these people they have done this work. So we are looking very fast through an article, what is the motivation, what is the scientific argument. Otherwise, there are so many publications that you are going to lose your time and you are not going to find out the most important uh, information. Why this work has happened, and then you are going to more details what experimental data uh, they collected or what experimental apparatus they uh, have used. <coughs> so this is the uh, uh, question that you should ask yourself all the time if you would like to be a critical reader. 
uh, why, you know, why this work has happened, why the specific topic has been selected, and etc. Why you select an article to, to read it? First of all, because it's your, uh, it is of your interest. Second, because you would like to involve in this kind of uh, research. Third one, we should read always and firstly, you know, the work of the innovators of the field. Because this helps us to build also our terminology, but also bring us to the borders of knowledge and not knowledge. What are we reading when we are checking a paper? First of all, we are reading the title. As, as you will see, the title when we are writing a paper should be short, should not be a long title. Your title should be accurate and on the point. The second thing that we are looking for are the author. We are looking for the author because in our field there are some motivators. As you as I have seen from Adam's talk, a lot of references to Guy. Why Guy? Because Guy was the innovator and the founder of Graphene. Whatever this person publishes, uh, always you know the people are going over there to find out the work of Guy. You can think about other people from your field that they are innovators and motivators of your field. The other thing that we are checking also are the key keywords uh, of the paper because this helps us to identify very fast that this paper is involved or this book chapter is involved in something that we are very much uh, is of our interest. And second one that we should check out are the date of the receipt and the date of the acceptance. In technology, unfortunately, everything moves very fast. So even though that a paper has been published or a book chapter has been published, you know, from the moment that it has been submitted to the moment that it has been published, probably it has passed a long time. This makes you know, the whole paper and the whole work uh, not to lose its interest, but to lose its uh, innovation and uh, impact. So, as these are what they say, uh, before I move on this, I, uh, we are reading the title, we are reading the keywords, and the first, the other, the second thing that we are doing is just go to the figures. If you understand the figures and the measurements, then you are moving to read the abstract, and if you read the abstract, then you are reading the whole paper. As you will see, in, by re reading a paper or, or a, a search book, we are moving forward and backwards all the time. All right? First of all, the motivation and the time make us to read the paper, and then by understanding the figures and the tables, make us more engaged to the paper, and then we are reading the whole paper. So, as we, um, the, one of the guidelines that we are using in order to write the paper is to invest some time in our figures. <coughs> I know that sometimes, you know, the people are getting bored about the figures, but this is one of the most important things, because nice figures attract, you know, the reader to read the whole book, the whole book or the whole uh, paper. If, you know, the whole paper is going to get access and be read, then a lot of citations are coming, and the impact of our research enhances. So the, the, the figures and the tables they are, should be very clear and well presented. So this is the second time that we are going to read. We are going to read the whole paper and we are going to read down and write down the motivation, the measurement and the experimental apparatus. And these are what I'm telling to my students here in the laboratory. When we found a nice paper to read and to present, we should write down in our lab, lab book the following information about the subject of the paper, the motivation. This helps us to find out what are new measurements we can do ourselves and how can we uh, enhance the topic that we are involved, what new things we can do, the methodology, the design of the experiment, the conclusions, the strengths and the weaknesses of the paper. And actually this is somehow also as a reviewer of, uh, in journals what I am doing when I am reviewing papers. You know, I would like to have this information, and if this information is very clear, this means that the paper uh, is well uh, written. As I told you, as I told you the paper, the reading a paper should not be, it should not be a linear process. A linear process is a reading a novel. I mean, I'm not saying that reading a novel is not a good thing, enhances your vocabulary, but it's a completely different procedure. Due to the volume of the, due to the volume of the publication, we should not read a scientific paper linearly. We should find, first of all, as I told you, the methodology, the, the motivation, the figures, and then move to reading and analyze the paper. So now, I will, based on what we say about reading and writing, I hope that you understand 
that the reading is not a, an automated procedure, but the, during the reading, you should find out the motivation and what are the experimental setup that they have used in order to get be, to, to be exploited and be liberated from your research. So now how to write a scientific paper? I mean, it's something that takes a lot of time. It's not something that happens automatically. Don't feel the same if your supervisor in your undergraduate studies or in your postgraduate studies is going to return your, your first manuscript and going to be read. Usually this happens to all of us. And I remember when I wrote my first paper during, during my PhD, what I had received was like a red dot. I was getting very angry because I thought that uh, my supervisor does not know, did not know his work. Of course, he knew his work very well. I was wrong the way that I was uh, writing the paper. So it takes a time and it's up to you to become a good uh, writer. What makes a good writing? Eh? Writing is like a presentation. And it's even harder because during oral presentations, we can engage each other. We can interact with each other, and if you have any question, you can stand up your hand and you can ask me the question. This, this is very hard when you are writing something. So when you are writing something, it should be very well written and very clear. As you will see, there are some rules that we are going to use in order to make you know, this uh, possible. Uh, it is the most elegant and stylish way to present our work, but the most important thing it's like to be coherent. A lot of people, they pay a lot of attention in order to nice, flashy wording, in order to present their work. But the way that they present their work through, the, through their uh, article is not coherent. So pay attention to the coherence of your article. And the coherence of your article is very much linked with the reading. Remember, when we are reading something, it should have a motivation. So when you are writing something, what are you writing should be very clear to the readers what is the motivation of your work, why are you doing this work, and how this work has solved a specific problem, and it's a, a, and it's a plus to the science advancement. Right? What makes a good writer? Have, you, have, you, have, you, have something to say clearly, this is again the motivation. Demonstrates logical thinking, coherence. We are doing this, uh, this is a problem, this is the way that we address the problem, and this is how do we um, uh, characterize what are we doing. Before, you know, um, the Polish professor present us different uh, measurements about the 2D materials that we are using. So he is using Raman, uh, optical absorption, optical emission. This is the way that he is checking uh, the things. He has a coherent, it was a coherent way uh, of uh, characterization of the materials. And uh, some few uh, um, have the rules that you can learn. As you will see, we never use passive voice. Always we use active voice. Whenever you are using passive voice, it's in a wrong way. It's like you are not taking the responsibility of what are you saying. Always prefer active voice. First of all, because the people they know that uh, Bartlett is doing this work and not you know someone else. Uh, it takes the responsibility. It's actually the way that we are talking is an active voice. We never talk in our daily life using uh, passive voice. Always we prefer to use moods, uh, we prefer to use verbs and not moods, and also try to be positive among the few uh, rules that we are going to use. And also the most important thing is use short sentences. Even now that I'm correcting papers or thesis, PhD thesis of uh, older people than yours and more experienced, People, they are using sentences of 10, 10 lines. I mean, this means that, you know, I have lost the plot. I mean, you might be, imagine to write, you know, to read a, a, a sentence of 10 lines. I mean, what is the meaning? And, all, and another rule that you should remember is, like, place this verb close to the object. I mean, don't use, you know, these commas that they are like parentheses and then the verb. Because always when we read something, we would like to know what George has done. So if George has done something and we are looking through the, the sentence when what George has done, we are losing our interest. So short sentences, as you will see, active voice and not passive voice, try to use verbs and not moods, eh? and other uh, small uh, rules that you should know. So other rules that we can use is like as I mentioned during the reading is try to 
read you know, articles of people that they have innovated our field because they are using the right terminology and they use the, and the way that they are writing presents with the highest impact uh, their work. Try to write in a journal. I have right now I'm experiencing the following. I'm experiencing, I have a very good PhD student in, uh, in the laboratory that I'm working. He's an excellent uh, guy in the laboratory and he's almost finishing, this is my mistake, his PhD and he has never read his paper. And you know, before two weeks I asked him, you know, you should write now your paper. I'm not going to collect, correct your work and write your work. You should start from the beginning. And, I mean, it takes time. But since you are going to be engaged and you are going to write your own paper, then you have, a very, uh, you have developed a very uh, strong soft skill. So try to write in a journal, try to write in a conference. Don't be based on your supervisor. Try to get engaged in something with a great benefit to you. Talk to the other people about your research. Why? Because if Barnett is going to speak to Rafael, Rafael is not here, but... Uh, or if you try to speak to your colleagues, that this is the measurements that I'm taking, or these are the conclusions that I'm taking, this engages other people to your work. So the other people could say, ah, check this way, probably what are you saying to me is not correct one. Probably you should take this measurement or the other measurement. And this, makes, this will make your article and your presentation even better. So in science right now, because of the competition, we try to hide things. I have taken this measurement. I should not tell to the other people in the coffee break that I have taken this measurement. This is the biggest mistake that I can do. I know that the competition, of course, I should publish before Adam, but if I am hiding things, Probably I'm doing a mistake, the paper is going to be rejected, or probably I'm going to do a wrong assumption, or even more. Adam can say to me something, like a, a, another theory or another measurement that I can take, and make my publication of a higher impact. So try to not communicate with the other people. Write to engage your readers. As I say to you, your motivation should be clear of what are you writing. It's the same thing when you are reading. The most clear is the motivation of what you would like to present, what you would like to write, or what you would like to read. It is the more uh, the, 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 the higher the impact of your work. Accept that writing is a very hard job. It's not something that we are learning immediately. Uh, revise. This is something that we are not doing. When I'm writing something, I th I'm thinking at the end that I have done the perfect work. When I, whenever I have tried to read it again, I don't understand myself. It's not like amazing, like I, what, what I'm talking about. So imagine that if my friend over there is a reviewer, eh, he will think what, what he's talking about. So revise your work. And revise your work two, three, or four times. Eh, and then I'm suggesting something else to the students in the laboratory. Give your manuscript to another research student. The other research student, because it's outside of your work, Will, will be placed in the, he will be placed on the position of the reader. So he will tell you what is the motivation of your work. If the others they know the motivation of your work, the article is very good. Because you have achieved the most important way. If the others can understand your figures and your tales, this means that your work is good. All right? So try to revise yourself. And as you will see, the same principles happen to the presentations. Eh? I made these presentations to the way here. I have never practiced this presentation, but the good way to, to do presentations is like to do your presentation in front of the mirror, sometimes to videotape yourself, and sometimes in front of your colleagues. Because the colleagues then, they will tell you, you speak too much, your transparencies are full of text, your transparencies are only figures, I mean, you should find the, uh, the balance. And the balance found is the best way to find the balance is communicate with the others. <laughs> Stop waiting for inspiration. Ah, this is like only in ancient Greece. Eh? In ancient Greece, we had the philosophers, the Greek philosophers. We did not have problems that period. We can sit down with a tree and we can make philosophy. But this is not the case now. We have competition eh? and we should be engaged to the problem because other problems are coming. And especially in the technology field, this line between no not knowledge and the knowledge that exists 
is moving very fast every day. And so you are going to be engaged and you should write every day something. Alright? And then uh, you will finish. Uh, and this is something that we are, we are not doing. It's like to, when we are writing something, it's our baby. Yeah? And if the supervisor will tell you you should sort down your sentences, or your, or your, or when you are writing a proposal, you have to use 7,000 characters, and you are using something you have read something excellent with 10,000 characters. To move from 10,000 characters to 7,000 characters is very cruel for uh, uh, the writer. Yeah? So you should learn how to cut the word that you don't need. Things not to do. Uh, your test should be readable and enjoyable. Your sentence should not be wrong. I'm, I'm, I'm using this uh, uh, rule of thumb. Do not more, not longer sentences than uh, two lines. You know, do not overline this. Do not write three words and then full stop. Three words and full stop. These are very short sentences, but you are get, the other gets tired. And remember that the, the, the UN will be someone that you should read the thing and enjoy what you have said to him. Try to inform the other ones. Try to avoid noons, because noons slow down the way of reading. Try to use verbs instead of noons, use verbs. Do not use, uh, uh, this is a very common mistake, do not use jargon or acronyms. Sometimes the paper starts with acronyms. I mean, I'm sorry about the language, eh? but I'm not a fucking expert you know, to this field. If you are starting to use acronyms from the beginning, I don't know what, you know, laser it is. Or I don't know what is uh, uh, SEM. Or what is PCE. What is PCE? From the beginning, PCE, 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 13%, PCE, 15%. Don't do this. Try to introduce the acronyms and then use the acronyms. Fix, not do. As we say, avoid passive voice. Do not place too much between the, uh, the verb, between the subject and the sentence. Because then the other one is looking for the verb. Always we are looking for the verb. So try to avoid it. Uh, write the last paragraph using uh, <coughs> past tense. Yes, this is something that I added. When you are in results, say a paragraph, always use past tense. Because you have done the experiment. It's not something that you will do. Otherwise, it will not be in the results. It could be, you can do this in conclusion, or accuse report. And complete all the comparisons. Sometimes the people, they start to do comparison, and they say, we have a better solar cell. Better in what? We have a better uh, MOSFET. Better in what? All right? So you should complete your comparison. And then try to, to analyze a little bit, you know, some of these rules. Like, remember what did I say to you? Try to be ruthless in cutting your sentences to short ones. This means that you should take out all the phrases that you don't need. Some of them, uh, so over there, there it comes this from uh, this uh, nice uh, um, book, Writing Well. And you know, this kind of, uh, this, uh, this kind of uh, trainer used to say to take out all the words that they have no meaning or they don't give any meaning. So this is uh, some examples that I'm doing. Uh, and uh, the, the, the things that you can avoid, for example, is as it is well known. This, we don't need this. Because in, refer in, in articles or in book chapters, we have the references. So with the references, we can, we can replace all this as it well known, or as it has been shown, or it can be regarded that, uh, with the references or with the figures that we have placed on the front. This is a rule to shorten your sentences. And we, I mean, these are phrases that they don't give any impact to our sentences. We are making our sentences longer without meaning. Uh, okay, I spoke about unnecessary jargons. Uh, sometimes it's better to avoid adverbs like very, really, quite, basically, generally, uh, and, and avoid long work on phrases uh, in order to make our experiences uh, so, eliminate negatives, try to be positive in your life. Try to replace a negative expression with a positive one. I think here I have an, an, an example. She was not often right, 
but in this case a negative thing. Try to avoid plots and etc. Try to say she was usually wrong. Alright, this is better. Try to avoid not and etc. And these are like uh, some uh, a tale from random things that I found out that they can be replaced and in order to be more positive and not uh, more positive and not negative, not honest, dishonest, not harmful, safe, not important, unimportant, and etc. Alright, so if I would like to review active voice and not passive voice, short sentences. There are some phrases that you can replace immediately and uh, be positive. There are some times that we, we are using a lot of there are, are there is, so there are, there are cases that we don't need them, so we can replace this kind of expressions, uh, omit needless propositions. I'm using a lot that or on in my, in my writing, so sometimes we don't need this that or on. And uh, rule number two, passive voice, we don't need it. Uh, as uh, I will repeat now myself, emphasize this author responsibility. As I said to you before, active voice in science is, some, is a must. If you use passive voice, no one knows who is the author and who is the guy that is, is doing this work. Improves its ability. Why? Because the way that we are speaking. Eh? We are speaking in our daily life using active voice. It reduces ambiguity because we know who is responsible about this work. <coughs> and uh, the question that I have, this means that we should never use passive voice. We can use passive voice, when, for example, in, in a results presentation or in experimental apparatus. That the experimental apparatus presents what kind of equipment we have used, how we have designed our experimental setup. That this is not important who has done it but you know what the apparatus is. So if you go to some uh, advanced materials, for example, journal, it has this apparatus section, as you will see over there, they are using passive voice and that. So where you can publish? You can publish during your academic career in all these uh, forms. All right? If you continue your studies, publishing is something very important. Because if you don't publish, you are out of the work. It's like our Wall Street in academia. In academia. Always when I'm checking for someone, I'm having a bad habit to go to the Google Scholar and check out this person. This does not say the full story, but say something. All right? So it's very important to know some basic tools and to teach our students how I mean, what are the building blocks? How to write the paper before we present some general rules about scientific writing? Reading writing is the same. Try, when you are reading something and you are asking yourself what is the information that you are looking for, and this will help you to write better. So, ah, uh, it does not work probably at the time instead. The most important thing, as I said to you, is the motivation. And if the knowledge stops at this step. My work should be this one, to find out the gap. And my work will fill this gap. So I will move one step uh, above. I mean, if the knowledge stops here, some people, they try to do, I cannot do it now because I'm in, I'm in that, but you know, to do a very big step, to move five steps ahead. This is very risky. Don't do it. Because there is a big gap then to justify your results. There is, no, there is no knowledge if you do five steps ahead. Because you have jumped. But if you go, if you do one step, you know, there is this knowledge. Because it's very close. Knowledge, uh, what is the gap is very small. If you do to try to do big jumps, then you are you are risking. Because you should find out all these steps, how they have been covered. Of course, some people they are getting, you know, the Nobel Prize. But these are very rare. Do you think, Adam, that you will ever get the Nobel Prize? No. But you, you have a hope that you are going to publish five papers this year, no? And you see? So small steps. And, and you should find out where are these borderlines. And the only way to find out this borderline, Bartek, is what? To read all the, bibli the bibliography. Not all, but the, 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 mo the, the most important one. Because you should know what are you going to do in the lab. If you are doing what the others are doing, of course, 
you are training your skills, but you are not doing something new. Always you should find out to do something new. So, uh, I will move a little bit, you know, of the most uh, uh, of the things that uh, uh, I have already done. The, the, the question now it is the following. When I should start to write? As I told you at the beginning, you should start to write without waiting to have um, a good mood. This is not the uh, rule of the game. The game is very ruthless and you should write your results using the most appropriate and more communicative way immediately. Right? You are writing your thesis towards the end of your fourth year. You cannot submit your thesis whenever you want. Am I right? In Thomas Moore, you are writing your thesis and you can submit it whenever you like. You have deadlines, no? And you are from the Thomas Moore? Yeah, you don't have yeah. to write those. Yes. Excuse me? You don't have to write those. You don't have to write thesis? Not really, no. Okay, but you not, should. Not like big ones, so. Yeah, anyhow, yeah. you have deadlines. Yeah, all right? Next. So whenever you have a deadline, you are not expecting, you know, for inspiration. You are starting to uh, write. In the, in the research, when are you starting to write? When you have not finished all the experiments, but when you have enough data in order to support your initial hypothesis. And sometimes during the experiment, this hypothesis sometimes is changing. Because through the work, you identify new things that because you have developed this judgment criteria through reading, you can say during the experiment that what I, I was thinking was wrong, probably I should approach this problem differently. Okay? So start to write your paper when you have enough data to start. Not, do not try you know, to finish all the experiment and then write your results. The, at the minimum, you have to tell a story. But this story, as we will see, has started because you have the motivation. You know what was the problem before you start the experiment. You know what are you doing and you are addressing this. And in order to have something reliable, your experiment should be reproducible. I mean, some people, they used to say, especially students, I can tell my supervisor a lot of time. I will bring my supervisor from the third floor to the ground a lot of time without me. Say, I found something fantastic. And try to do it again, nothing happened. All right? So you should, before you try to do something, try to produce these results many times. And actually, right now, they, depending on the field, the people, they are asking about this. How many times you have taken this measurement, especially in the solar cells that I'm involved? You know, they are asking how many solar cells you have produced with this kind of physics. You have a story to tell this motivation. It should be present a real contribution to the field because I know the problem. And I'm doing this. I have the gap. My work filled the gap. All right? So I have a story to do. And sometimes the people are under question, especially in the industry. They don't publish first. They patent first and then publish. All right? Or if you're working with an industry-related project, you cannot publish. The company will decide if you will publish. Because this is a patent for you. All right? Um, I will skip, I will not, I will, I'm not following the scenario. How, how to write now the paper? The moment is like when you have a, enough results. How to write the paper should start before the results come. You should, we have the, the well-known outline. Outline of our paper. Before you start your paper, you have some problems to address. Performance. Optical performance, electrical performance, manufacturing, and some types of the experiments that we should do. And, and these experiments that we will do define the outline of our paper. And we are going to fill these uh, outlines with the, our results and our conclusions, and then we will start to write the paper. All right? So uh, we should find out the outline, this one. And this, has to, this is a work that we should do with our supervisors or with the postdocs that were working in the laboratory. We know the gap and we should, we know the gap, this means we have the motivation, but what we should do is something that we should interact with the other one, we should tell the story. And in order to say the story, you should back up your results from different angles. And this is the outline. 
the outline of your experiment, it will be the outline of your paper. All right? And this will uh, help you a lot during writing. Don't try to set up the outline during the writing. This is the wrong way. Try to do the outline before you start the experiment, because this is the plan. This is like building a house. You are not building a house by calling the builders and saying to them, I need a 140 square meter house with a big bathroom and a swimming pool. You have the plans first. You are giving them the plans. Am I right? We have people from architecture. Why do you say that? Design. <laughs> you do have people from design? No. So I brought them in another space. Uh, so try to write the outline of your work and etc. Second one. When you have the outline, and the outline will direct your experiment, and then you will fill in your outline with what? With figures and tables, which are your measurements. Alright? And this helps you to nice to write down all the figures and the tables, nice captions. Look the way now that I have presented to you the reading. When we are trying to read something, what we are doing? First thing what that we are doing, motivation. Second thing that we are doing, figures and tables. The reader will not read the whole paper. We'll go to his paper and we'll go to the figures and tables. And if the figures and tables are correct and clear, he will read your paper. He will evaluate your paper positively. So the same now reverse. When you are writing a paper, you have the motivation, you design your experiment, which is going to be how your paper will be constructed. And you are starting, you are starting to construct with the way that you are reading the paper, with figures and tables. This is your work. Alright? Motivation and what you have done. And this is going to be a nice caption. A lot of students, among, among them, me and my PhD student right now, started to write from the introduction. We will see what is an introduction. This is the wrong way. <coughs> you are not going to start with the introduction because you are going to lose time, because you don't know where to finish. Start from your results. Alright? So figures and tables these are your results. Step three. Now we are adding the other things of the paper. Title, abstract, introduction, literature review, methodology, results, discussion, and conclusions. So I'm moving to the outline of the paper and I'm going to give some rules behind each one of these titles. Title, authors, abstracts, introduction, results, discussion, materials and methods, references, anonymous figures and data, and supplementary materials. These are the things that your paper should contain, but you are starting the writing from the, from the results. The abstract, that is the first one, or even the title that is the first one, are the last thing that you are going to write. Don't try, don't try to start from the abstract. Why? Because the abstract is a short summary of, your, of what we have done. It should be clear to you what you have done, and it's not going to be clear to you if you are not going to present your figures and tables. And if it's clear to you, it's going to be clear to the others that they are going to read the paper or your thesis. And don't overestimate. What I'm, what I'm telling here is not only enough you know, for papers, because the majority of your undergraduate students, some of you, you are going to become postgraduate students, you should wake up, my friend. Uh, I'm coming. Uh, so, uh, so, these rules matters even if you are writing your thesis. Master thesis in the chat. So let's go to the title. What do you think? Rafael? What's your name? Maciek. <laughs> Who? Maciek. 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 Okay. Maciek, what do you think about the title? It should be wrong? It should be long or short? Uh, I, think, I think it should be, uh, should be rather long, in my opinion. It should uh, consist all of the Exactly. He gave the correct answer. <laughs> the, the answer that he gave to me should be, it, it was the following, it is, it is as long as necessary. Because the title should be accurate. The other one should know that this is about Raman spectroscopy, about graphene. Don't try to write titles that you know they are like paragraphs. I mean, this is something that no one is going to read it. Because when you are searching about the papers, 
you know, the papers are listed not by the abstract, by the title. So the title should be as general as possible, but to capture the essence of your work. All right? And avoid again to use acronyms. Because the acronyms in the title is the, the, the worst mistake that you can do. Why? Because they don't know the acronyms. You should introduce the acronyms to the audience before you use them. And of course, you know, other rules that we are not doing, and this is the well-known read the fucking manual eh, rule, is like to read the regulation of the journal. Because there are some regulations about how long your article, your title should be. Do not overload the, the title, because the additional information can go, go back to the reading, to the keywords. Remember the reading? The thing that we are doing is like typing and keywords. The additional thing that you would like to say, that is not essential, but is important, they can go to the keyword. Authorship, oh my god. This is the worst scenario of the worst fight of any group. This is the first scenario of conflict between the supervisor and the research student. It's the, the worst scenario when you know, two colleagues they can have a fight. Who is going to be the first? Who is going to be the last author? But there are regulations about who is going to be the first and who is going to be the last author. The first author is a person that has done the experimental work. He has driven the writing of the paper. And he, he was the main person that has done his work. The first and the second one. And the last one usually is the supervisor or the founder of the work, the founder, the person that he gave the money. Eh? Because he planned the work or he has financed the work. Eh? If you would like, and when you place a person within the authorship, you should ask yourself the following question. If I have not placed pluralities, for example, in the paper, I have done the work. If I can say yes, I can done the work, I have done the work without pluralities, I'm not going to place pluralities. And pluralities cannot say anything to me. But imagine if Lurax has done the work and I have not placed him, I have not placed him, you know, within the office. Like this is legal, this is science ethics, which is another presentation. Alright? So the, 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 the roles are clear. And if someone has taken a measurement, that the measurement is included within our uh, journal, but it was not a real contribution to the work, it was not a real contribution to this step to do in order to go further and advance the science, then I have the acknowledgement also. I can thank Lurakis. Uh, I'd like to thank uh, uh, Dr. Lurakis, for example. He's not a doctor, but you know, probably he will become. Uh, because in his laboratory, we have taken the Raman measurement. I mean, uh, Adam, you are, I'm pretty sure that in University of Warsaw, you have technicians or scientists, they are scientists, they are not technicians, that they are taking Raman spectroscopy, am I right? Yes. Are you placing them to the authorship? Uh, we actually are doing uh, politics. Or the no, like, we are doing experiments like, like, like using students. Ah, all right. So yeah, we don't have, <laughs> don't have technicians. Yes. But. In Greece, we have a laboratory in Paris, that when we ask for them for a man, they ask us, if we are going to do the Raman, you will place us in the authorship. Of course, this is not legal. It's not ethical. Right? So we can place them to the announcement. Astra, what is the answer? I mean, I would like to ask the postgraduate student. I would like to ask the lady. Yes. Carolina. Yeah, Carolina, tell me. Oh, yeah, I remember Carolina because I get stressed to in Barcelona. <laughs> uh, what is the difference of abstract and introduction? Look, Carolina, very well. Remember what Carolina said? The summary of our work, the most important results, eh, 